Okay, we're on to today's. Delay, yeah, 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 yeah. It fades off into the distance. This feature is about expanding your standard sounds into new realms. And that's why we do this. Hi and welcome to Tome and Synthesizer with me, Jason. Today, we are looking at delay pedals and synthesizers. Now, the delay is probably my favorite effect to pair with a synthesizer. My favorite movie, Forbidden Planet, which features heavily tape loops, tape echoes, strange oscillators predating synthesizers, but creating a really atmospheric uh, soundscape. We'll touch on some of that as we go through these now, because it would be impossible for me to use delays without referencing that. So if you know the movie, great. If you don't, you need to check it out. So let's talk a little bit about the history of delay. Uh, probably the first person recorded history to use it was uh, Elvis's guitar player, Scotty Moore. And it was much a case of using a tape loop on a studio reel-to-reel -reel recorder. Uh, and the delay was literally at the same level as the source and was once repeated, so slap back. And it would sound a little like this. Short delay, maybe, you know, 150 milliseconds. But with an arpeggio. <laughs> Not bad, but not great either. Fast forward to the mid 50s, people like um, uh, Watkins Copycat, a small portable device with a tape loop with multiple heads, uh, which would then give you a lot more feedback and you start to see the birth of what we now know today as a delay pedal. Now, onto what we've got on the table in front of us, because I'm gonna try and take you through history with each of these pedals all the way up to the modern day. All these pedals are available today, just to clarify that point. The T-Rex oh, tape echo replicator features a tape. So this is probably the closest thing you'll find uh, in new form to the uh, Watkins Copycat, or I mean, as, it, as later, you know, things like the Roland Space Echo, although there are, you know, digital emulations of that. This features cassette. Okay, so this has multiple heads and would sound a little bit more like this. If we turn the feedback up, that will then engage each of the heads. So, that degrading in time, because the tape going round and round. If we put that arpeggiator back on. Now, for my money, whacking the feedback up to cause it to feed back. You get that very... Instant 50s sci-fi. There it is. So I'm gonna turn that off because the motor in this thing is quite powerful and it's actually vibrating the table. That is an excellent bit of kit. Um, they do a module, a rack, a Euro rack module of that, which is also good to know. So along the same time, um, we see some really ingenious um, <clears throat> employment of Alternate means of re replicating the tape. So um, the Echo Rec by Binson was a steel drum with an aluminium band rather than a magnetic tape. So obviously magnetic tapes, very flexible, aluminium band, very solid. So the Caitlin Bread Echo Rec is a direct replica of that. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like.
again, similar characteristics, but in a pedal form. Okay, so that's the 50s. Fast forwarding now onto the late 60s and into the 70s, we see the Bucket Brigade devices chips proliferate the market and the birth of the analog delay, um, which typically took the signal and repeated it. And each time the repeat would happen, the quality of the sound would degrade, giving you a nice warm tail off. Um, think Electroharmonics, Memory Man, uh, MXR, analog delay. This is the modern version of that, the carbon copy. And you'll recognize this, def this kind of tone, definitely. So let's have a listen. There you go. Regeneration feedback. A little ways into the 70s, Whilst the king of analog delay was making a real name for itself, Lexicon came out with the DDL1745, which was the first digital delay. Now this gave us a staggering 200 milliseconds of delay. I mean, we're talking way back to when it started, very similar to the slap back delay created with the tape machine. Um, now this wasn't something that everyone could afford because it was $3,800 back then, so I don't even know what that would be in modern terms, but it's a lot of money. And into the 80s we see the likes of the Lexicon PCM42 rack delay, the TC Electronics 2290, and of course the trusty Boss DD2 pedal. DD500, a little bit more expanded, with a lot more versatility, but still the same digital delay. So, no degradation of tone over time. Analog, fades off, tape wobbles, digital delay remains true. Need you say more? Okay, but is that the end of the story? The DD2 in 1984, 85? No, it isn't. On to today, the Empress Effects ecosystem offering a multitude of different types of modulation in one box, all the way from digital, analog, tape, and multi effects. So we have a lot of different things in there. Now, I'm gonna show you the modulation now, which is also available on the carbon copy, just as an on off, where the inside contains the adjustments for depth, depth and rast, rate, and depth. Uh, also available on the Deluxe Memory Man back in the 70s. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Rate and depth. I mean, you might want to use that. It's not not the most extreme version of that, but it's still a nice effect to play with. Okay, I'd also like to show you the ambience. Which has a lot more in common with maybe, I don't know, reverb? So it's a very basic mod sound. Now this also does something a little bit more crazy in there. Let's have a little listen, modulating, uh, panning as well. And that's modulating and you're changing the depth of the delay, which changes the pitch just like you get on a tape delay. I don't know how useful that would be in a tune, but. Crickets. Let's have a listen to what else you can do. Uh, stutter. Now I'm going to change my plucky sound to a pad for this, I think.
Wow. Just a little slice of what you can achieve with that. Okay, so moving on to modern day DSP based effects. The Eventide H9 is a multi-effect system. We're just going to slice it down and look at the delay versions because it does everything else as well. Harmonizer, so pitch effects, harmonizing, uh, chorus based stuff, uh, reverbs. It does a whole host of things other than just delays, but let's just gonna focus it on delays. If you're wondering about the uh, Diamante design on this, you don't get that when you buy your H9. This is my personal H9 on the table. Anyway, um, I need a Bluetooth enabled device to access the deeper functions of this, because at the moment we'll just have... That sounds good. Digital delay, Vintage delay, tape echo, modulated delay, we've heard all those. Duck delay, band delay, filter pong, and multi tap. Oh, oh. Let's go filter pong. You get all the. Uh, right, that's filter. So what else have we got? Band delay, which would be like a band pass, I guess. Right, so. That sounds like the filter one from before, doesn't it? So I also wanted to show you multi-tap. So multi-tap is, as the name suggests, it taps into the delay feedback. You can create some really amazing effects with multi-tap. See if there's anything kind of interesting with this. So big swell pad. You can... Future Sound of London. I'm thinking life forms. So you're creating a new sound, you're, you're expanding your existing sound into new realms. I can do a lot of really cool stuff. I, we're really only scratching the surface of a lot of this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to play out with one of my favorites on the bench, the Tape Echo Replicator by T-Rex and the Mini Nova. I'm going to do something a little bit more ambient. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative. It might make you want to go and check out those delays that you have already in your door. Or maybe like me, it's made you want one. Anyway, please like, subscribe, share and enjoy. And until the next time, don't forget that there should be no delay. 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 If we're gonna go so